Hi, my tubies. As I told you, I was going to hook my do up and get it together. And here we are. And today I want to talk about my new do. No, I'm only joking. <laughs> I want to talk about why you keep falling for narcissists. Oh, forget you. Let's just talk about we. Why do we keep falling for narcissists? I said I was going to hook this hair up and like whatever. Anyway, when you have abandonment, abandonment issues, this is what causes you to keep falling for narcissists and toxic people. That's what causes us to keep falling. You can tell that you have abandonment issues when as soon as you meet someone, things move quickly from merely dating to a full-blown relationship in hardly any time, record time. When you have abandonment issues, this is what causes you to easily become infatuated with the attention that the narc gives you. They make you feel wanted. They make you feel needed. And because of this, you're vulnerable and it's easy. It's so easy for them to mistreat you. Let me put my glasses on. Now, fear of abandonment also causes you to lack having boundaries. That's definitely a necessity in any relationship. Without boundaries, you become a pushover. You become a people pleaser. Even if it means abandoning yourself and your needs. You know, that's dangerous. When you start abandoning your own needs, that's when it becomes not only dangerous, but very very dangerous until you deal with this issue or until well I'm, I'm I don't know if I could say we on that because I'm I don't I don't have abandonment issues I really don't think so because I'm usually the one I'm always the one kicking them out so anyway but until you deal with this issue you're going to continue being sucked into this these types of relationships having a fear of being alone is what causes you to be drawn to these toxic relationships isn't that interesting also, if you have low self-esteem, this also makes you a target for the narcissist or for constant toxic relationships. You feel there's no way that anybody could truly love you because you struggle to love yourself. That's where the problem lies. Your self-esteem has gone AWOL. You doubt every decision that you make. You suffer from anxiety, not just about relationships, but also about everything. Think about it. You, you, you have anxiety about everything. And this leads to putting up with things that no human being should have to put up with. You know, to build up your self-esteem, the number one thing you have to do is to stop comparing yourself to other people. When you do that, you will always feel inadequate and believe that everyone around you, they're so much better than you. When we compare ourselves to others, or oh, I don't compare myself, I try not to, you, you, may, you know, maybe you want to see how well you're doing, but when we compare ourselves to others, we often get trapped in the false thinking that other people have perfect lives, perfect lives while we're living our crappy little lives. Unless you are living inside of a, another person's home, and unless you have access to their thoughts and to their feelings, you don't know the truth. You really don't know the truth about how these people are really living. Everything is not what it appears to be. You know, I find I found out that most people, when you talk to most people, especially a lot of women who I've spoken to, I found that most people hate their appearance and they feel bad about themselves. Everyone is physically flawed in some way. Believe that. Picture the greatest model. She has issues. Comparing yourself to others is destructive to your self-esteem. Keep your eye on your own prize and stay focused on your goals and your dreams. There's not a human alive. This is the way I feel. And I'm not being how you say narcissistic. No, I feel that there's not a human being alive who's better than me. Better? Uh, -uh no. We are all different. And like the Bible says, we all are superior to others in some way. Because we all have something we could teach each other. One person may be anointed with the ability to inspire and motivate others. While someone else 
they may be anointed with the ability to heal other people emotionally. You know, we all have different gifts and different talents. I don't know how to play certain instruments. You may be a, a great on the keyboard. What about some, some people are actually blessed with the ability to speak with wisdom and knowledge? Like my Shiro, like my mentor, Joyce Myers. That's definitely her anointing. Speaking to build people up. The woman is amazing. You got to go on YouTube, listen to her. She has all these topics that you will love. The best way I find to build up self-esteem is to set goals and achieve them. As you achieve each goal, you're going to notice how your self-esteem is going to rise higher and higher and higher. The higher your self-esteem, the less bullery and the less abuse you're willing to take and put up with. Okay? You're not going to tolerate it when you have a healthy self-esteem. This is why I kick these circus clowns out. I've never had a man leave me. I have always kicked them to the curb because you know why? Like Dr. Martin Luther King, I can't stand injustice. It just, it's, it's wrong to abuse people who are trying to love and care about you. They're trying to care about you. They're trying to love you. And for you to want to abuse them, that's total injustice. You know, that just makes my blood boil. I can't handle it. I got to admit it. I can't handle it. That's why I kicked them out repeatedly. You hear me? Repeatedly. When I allow them to come back, and they show me that they are willing to be a team player, then they can stay. When they turn back into the circus clowns, back to the circus they go. Back to the circus they go. Red noses for everyone. <laughs> the only reason I tolerated my narc for so long, and I got to be honest with you, was because he had disabilities. If he didn't have disabilities, I would have thrown that guy out after three months. He, The way he behaved after three months, I was ready to kick him to the curb. I would have threw him away after three months and I would have never looked back. Never. As far as you and I know today, think about this. This is your one and only life. If you live, let's imagine, you live to the age of 90. Figure out how many days left you have to live. No, really, take time to add that up. You have a limited number of days. So do you want to waste one of any one of those days feeling bad about yourself and not demanding the best life has to offer you? Do you really want to let these narcissists determine how you're going to live? Who wants to live a life walking on eggshells and living in misery? Who wants that? I know I don't, darling. I know I don't. And I know you probably don't deserve it either. Anyway. This is Sheila True Love loving you. And you need to start loving yourself. Yeah, you got somebody out here who loves you and who got your back. Yeah, that's right. You know, you give me a call. I always leave my phone number and my email address uh, at the bottom. If you look near the comments or whatever, I always try to do that. And I've talked to several people who have called me and emailed me. And we've talked for hours. We've talked, I've been, we've been on the phone for hours. And they're all amazing. These are all strong women. I've even talked to some of the men. And the things that these men have been through, mm -mm, it's not just about women. I was shocked. Because normally women are very nurturing and very loving. And you would think, you know, uh, this is going to be amazing. But these men have stories to tell. Anyway, darlings, you always have a choice. Please choose wisely. Okay? Until next time, we'll talk again. This is Sheila True Love. Signing off until next time. I love you so much. If only you knew.